Hello again, and welcome to another section of, I guess, what we're calling questions from quarantine. Uh, that is that is the unofficial name that we've come up with for this. Uh, I am joined today by a, a an old friend of mine uh, and a very, very talented uh, site designer. Uh, I let him introduce himself. Uh, he does many things, uh, but go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan Emmons. I'm a uh, set designer that I'm currently based out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I, I, at this point, I am exclusively a set designer, but I have, through from Winter Springs, I've had worn many hats. Um, after graduating Winter Springs, I went to UCF um, for their uh, de technical uh, uh, design slash technical theater uh, program. So I did both design and how to execute that design. Uh, and while there, I did a little bit of everything and I found I really enjoyed set design. So um, in like the last year or so, I really focused on that. Uh, and that led me to an internship with Orlando Repertory Theater. Uh, so children's theater and I did a whole bunch of painting. I started out as an intern, but then I uh, was uh, hired as a paint charge uh, several times. And then I did a uh, one set design for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And at which point, uh, my now wife, uh, we had gotten married and we said, you know, we want to move somewhere else. And so we just packed, we, we got married, packed up and moved to Chicago um, on just a, a leap of faith there. Um, and so I started uh, freelance set designing there um, here and um, starting out with the sandwich making job and doing theater on the side and, you know, to, one to support the other and uh, eventually I was getting enough work because making new contacts and you know, you know contacts lead to more shows etc and uh, I was able to make a, a full-time freelance career out of it and uh, was designing in Chicago for several years I was applying for grad school and I got into Yale School of Drama and uh, went there for three years Graduated in 2018 and uh, moved back to Chicago and kind of restarted the the freelance thing of like I, I had a a couple uh, shows that uh, I was able to land because of people that I worked with before that they liked my work and like working with me so they hired me again <laughs> and uh, that that's where I am now I'm I'm still freelancing. Uh, and once this quarantine is done, I'll jump right back on to the next show. Very, very cool. So um, just to have a little bit of background and knowledge, um, what goes into the set design process for you? How does it work? For me, uh, it all starts with the first meeting with the director of them saying what the show means to them, what, they, with, what they've gotten out of it. And I've already read the script at this point and um i just take what uh i think uh like w how the show and the, the story responds to me and then i look at what the director what they presented to me and then i start working on how to make the these ideas into a cohesive thing um like at this point i'm not thinking about budget i'm just thinking what what is this space what what kind of story and what are we trying to tell um, I dream big. Then I start looking at the, the, one of the first things I'll do uh, for me is I make a model. Uh, some people, some set, set designers like to sketch it all out, but for me, I go straight to a model so I can sculpt. I can just throw stuff in, see what that looks like, always have a scale figure in there so you can see what that looks like next to a person and, um, I, I go back and forth, uh, revising, revising, revising the model, show it to the director and uh, keep sculpting, keep forming until we get what it is. Very cool. Um, question from some of my students. Uh, I think the first one that I, I liked and has jumped out to me here, um, is your job stressful? Uh, have you ever gotten stressed out? And uh, what is that like? How do you deal with it? Oh, heck yeah. That is, <laughs> absolutely, yes. Stressful, yes. But the, um, the, the more uh, t 
times you do it, the, uh, the training and just the more familiar you are with the steps and your, how you work and, uh, like it took a while until I realized, Oh, I really work very well with the model. And that is something that I can rely on. And that eases my stress, but absolutely. Um, something that's where, um, uh, the different jobs between designers, like a, um, a set designer's job, it's stressful at the beginning before actors are even in the room and you're trying to figure out what it is. Once final drafting, uh, like the, the most stressful part is probably getting up to that final drafting, making sure every, all of your ideas are in this packet of information for you to hand off to the people that are gonna build it. Once we get into the space, hopefully, my job as a set designer is almost done because the things are built. I can't change very much. Um, whereas a lighting designer, their job really begins the first day of tech. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, things could go wrong and then that would be stressful. But at this point, I already, I know my design intimately enough that I know how to tweak it to make things work. Yeah, for but, sure. Can it be stressful? Oh yeah. Good. Um, I've got another question that was, um, what is it, how does your job uh, affected by somebody who is dealing with either, either director's intention or the, the script itself calls for a very minimalistic set? How do you approach uh, designing a set very minimalistically? That's great. Um, I think so many sets could be done very simplistically. Um, and it's listening to the director of what is the most important stuff to them. Mm -hmm. um, but step one is to look at the script and figure out physically what are the things you cannot do the show with. Like, is it a, a, a chair, table, stuff like that? But also, is it a, a doorway, a threshold, something for someone to uh, enter and appear, or some, uh, things like that. Once you identify what those things are, put those in the model, how, whatever, however you do that, or put it into your sketch. Then think of like, what is the big idea as like a, a backdrop or, or yeah, a, a encompassing uh, world. And that's how I would do a Minimal. minimal set. Cool. Um, was there ever a set that you designed that you thought you could have improved upon after you saw it built? Oh, yes, all the time. Like, okay. it, it, so many designs, uh, it, even as soon as it's open, I'm like, ooh, I wish I could do that better. Like, I have, I have another idea for that. It's too late now, I think. Yeah, next time. <laughs> uh, but uh, certainly there have been shows like... Uh, I, at this point, it's several years old now, but uh, I did a, uh, a show with a, basically a high school group uh, with the uh, importance of being earnest. Mm -hmm. And I was just working kind of within the kind confines of, I was so focused on budget and um, how to make flats and everything. But at this point, after <clears throat> uh, further in my career, I'm like, Maybe we didn't need flats. Maybe we could have done something else uh, to to work within my two hundred dollar budget, which was that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, was a shoestring budget. But I, I, I think of things like that of how I can uh, do things differently now to that would better serve the 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 script and like what it really needs, and not what I think. Oh well, you have to have flats. So how do I make flats? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very cool um your budget things actually kind of ties into another one of the questions that got asked what is the biggest mm -hmm. budget you've ever had to work with well the the smallest one w would have been that that 200 <laughs> on the other end the the my biggest show that i've done was in my last year of grad school uh fifth nope nope twenty two thousand. that was that was a nice day yeah <laughs> um, wow yeah, uh, so be, be with uh, you know, Yale School of Drama, they, they have, there's the drama school and then the repertory, Yale Repertory Theater, and they work very closely together, but technically uh, Yale Rep is a League of Chicago, uh, League of Regional Theaters, a Lort D. Lort, yeah. Yeah, 
and um, a, as that they have a, a nice uh, a nice status. And so with that twenty two thousand dollar budget, um, uh, I had all of this fake brick, like dimensional brick, which uh, we found was really important to the design. Like it couldn't have just been painted because lighting was going to do some stuff where they just uh, skim uh, the brick from the side to give this uh, noir sort of uh, look. If It's on the, the first page of my, my website um, right now. So uh, oh. all painted black. It was very nice. Um, what skills uh, have you learned in your education and even on the job that um, you think are absolutely necessary for somebody who does uh, set design work? Drawing, uh, okay. that, that is number one, to, to learn how to draw because it might be you're in a meeting and you have an idea that you want to communicate to a director and you can visually describe it as much as possible, but it's not the same as having a picture, having a thing, because that's, that's what our medium is, is a physical, uh, you know, visual uh, idea. So if I can draw something and draw it well, like being in proportion in some sort of perspective, it really informs the director my idea immediately. Um, that, that would be the, the very first thing I'd recommend. From there, um, you can do so much. And whether your medium is model building or watercolor or marker or paint, it all starts with the drawing. I, I try to practice drawing as much as possible. Um, I really started from undergrad and been trying to continue drawing as much as possible. Very, very cool. Um, how do you think as the set designer, the set design helps change the atmosphere of the stage throughout the play? Hmm. It definitely transforms. It, it, it takes you out of the everyday world and puts it into somewhere specific. Um, it, to me, it's the, the very first thing to inform where we're going to go, what, what kind of show this is going to be. Cool. Um, how much do you use background information and imagination uh, to design the set that matches the theme of the play? How much do I use, like research? Yeah. Uh, research is, uh, is very beginning like that. That would be the next step after I've figured out what it, the show means to me, listening to the director. If there is a specific location, a specific time, uh, I will look at that, see what those shapes are. Um, like uh, for, there's the, the, the show that I did in grad school, uh, Native Son, which is based on a book. Um, in a very specific uh, time in Chicago history, I looked at those shapes and what that world is, which is very different than Orlando, Florida, which is what all I knew. Yeah, <laughs> and sure. so uh, going to the research, um, that, that's primarily what I look at. Uh, uh, there will be shows, uh, occasions where I'll look at artists, like uh, non-theater as much as possible, like visual artists, sculptors, painters, uh, see what they're doing, uh, artists that work with light. Um, that's, that can be informative. I do avoid looking at other set designs because there the answer's already presented to me and it's not my idea. Uh, and besides the, the fact of plagiarism, which is you should not do, um, if I were to look at something, especially early in the design process, that would, you know, soil all of my other thoughts and like all I could think of is that. And so I can always look at it later once I've already established my ideas of what did other people do, but I try to think of my own idea first. Oh, that makes, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> How long does it usually take from when you finalized your design to the set actually getting built? Hmm. That will depend on uh, the theater, on the production, uh, on their budget. Uh, some, uh, it, 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 it will take a couple weeks, of course. Um, uh, 
minimum like a, a month for a good sized set or at least for, for where I am in my career right now. Mm -hmm. um, in the, those early $200 budget shows where I was building the building and painting the set myself, it took like a, a week, two weeks with the help of volunteer dads that uh, where their kids were in the production. The, the choice of all of that. Um, so what are um, some of the, some of the shows that you've designed that uh, you have really, really stuck out to you? What are, what are some of the, the credits that you have? Uh, apart from Native Sound that I've mentioned a couple times, um, I just finished a, a show. It, it was in the middle of the run during the quarantine and uh, they did uh, a broadcast afterwards um, called Kill Move Paradise. Uh, that one was great. It, it was about um, violence to young black community and um, it brought really good attention to an older white audience. Uh, I thought, thought that was extremely important. Um, pre, uh, before that, with the same director, I did a, uh, a show that won a Jeff Award, which is a uh, Chicago based kind, kind of like the, the you know, uh, Tony's Oscars, things like that, but it just Chicago, uh, uh, which that was pretty cool. Um, Very cool. It, I may have mentioned that to the students when I was plugging your interview. So thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, it, it did. It, it, what was cool about it uh, is as a Chicago storefront theater, have you talked about storefront, uh, what that means to your students? Okay. So a uh, storefront done like the off Broadway, off off Broadway, Broadway. Um, we've got those classifications, but mm -hmm. less less specific. So yeah, what's a storefront so theater? Off uh, the the storefront theater, which there are that's a lot of what Chicago is. There's certainly the big theater houses that uh, have fly space, etc. But a uh, a storefront theater is basically a found space where they they find some sort of room, a is a store like an empty storefront and they transform it into a theater in some way. And so in this production, there was a kind of an expectation of what could be done in a space like that. And I think the uh, thing that people really responded to with this design is um, uh, halfway through the show, like uh, the first half, uh, for first quarter really, we're on the streets of New York and in a subway in a park. But those, ha those scenes happened very quick. And the majority of the show is in this uh, apartment in Harlem. And I, I, I wanted to take the whole set, since it's a cast of two, I wanted that whole thing to be in the audience's face. And so what we did in a transition, um, uh, one, one of the characters blacks out, and the next thing he knows, he's in this apartment. And so in a transition, in the dark, very low light, this whole huge platform that had the entire uh, apartment on it very slowly crept towards the audience for like a, a, a solid minute. It, it took, took a while. Um, that was fun. <laughs> Sounds really cool. What show is that? That was Dutch Masters. Okay. Uh, actually, the, the video of the transition is on my website. Have, have fun watching at that. Like at first, it's very imperceptible, especially on the, the video, unfortunately. But uh, it was kind of creepy having this large thing slowly move towards you in the fog. Very, very cool. Um, awesome. Um, what advice would you have for somebody who is uh, looking at becoming a set designer? Mm. I think for any kind of design uh, or acting, see theater. It's it, it's hard. It, it can be hard sometimes to after your busy day, go turn right back around and go see some theater. Um, but that has been very informative for me as a set designer. Um, drawing, like I mentioned. Um, see art that is not theater, go to art museums, um, always be thinking of how can I incorporate this into a design. Um, my, my, I'm a cre creator, my hands are always moving, making something, like in this quarantine, I'm, I'm sewing a jacket. Um, I, uh, 
Oh, one thing I did want to mention is have a hobby, something that is not theater, something that is not your job. And one of my hobbies is painting miniatures for board games. Uh, and so like I do this. <laughs> That's cool. I got a, a dragon and a two headed giant, like an Etten, hard to nice. see in the light. But yes, so I spend time practicing my craft by relaxing. That that works for me. Other people like to have things that are completely not uh, the craft, like baking. Very very cool. Um, I think the last question I'm gonna ask uh, comes from the students. Um, what was the funniest set that you have designed? Hmm. Funniest. There have definitely been fun ones. I don't know about comical, but like you, you definitely do have some fun with uh, children's theater that because there you can have a lot of fun thinking up crazy ideas. Like um, I have a, a, a model handy for the Emperor's New Clothes, where there was an idea that the, it, it was a, a fun script where the, the Emperor is spending all the money on himself uh, in his clothes, and meanwhile, the, the poor peasants are stuck wearing brown because no one wants to wear brown. Uh, and so we had a, a fun idea, the director and I, of taking out all the the clothes that the emperor would wear, um, which we, we chose the royal colors as purple, orange, and blue. And uh, we we wanted like the idea of flags, like the in, in the middle of a market square but instead of flags, they're clotheslines. And so it kind of had this uh, feeling of the market square in a, you know, in imperial palace type, type of uh, time period, but also modern and bright and colorful. That would be fun for the kids to where they felt like they are part of the show. That was fun. Very, very cool. So uh, if they want to see your work or um, get in contact with you and ask you any other questions that may have come up after they watch this, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, are there any product projects that you're working on? And what else would you like to say? This is your wonderful self-promotion plug time. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my website, ryanemmons.com. Uh, it used to be Ryan Emmons Designs, but that's uh, too confusing. So just my name, ryanemmons.com. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of pictures of my shows. There's, there's a contact thing where you can, uh, email me if, if you have any questions of like, uh, set design, costume design, lighting design, any kind of design, I can advise, except sound. Sound is not my thing. I've learned. I don't do sound. Um, <laughs> uh, upcoming shows of once the quarantine is over, um, there, we have, a project that I'm really excited about uh, called Exit Strategy that um, it's written by a Chicago uh, playwright here. Um, he had, it's uh, one of the plays in like the seven part series. And so it'll be a lot of fun to work on uh, a kind of a, a, a new theater and with the, the same director as Dutch masters, it's going to be a lot of fun. Very, very cool. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, uh, to talk to us and answer some questions. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. So uh, thanks for chatting with us. Lovely chatting with you, Keith. Take care. <laughs>